How excited are you about the possibility of adding three more top 20 picks into your football club? You must be relishing the opportunity you're about to get. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, it's a really exciting time for the club. I um, feel like, yeah, we've handled the last few drafts really well. And, yeah, to, um, tomorrow and the next day give us a great opportunity to add to our, add to our list. Um, so, yeah, it's a very exciting time. How involved have you been in the process, Justin? Uh, to be honest, not not overly involved. Uh, yeah, obviously, uh, I have a fair say in um, list management needs and um, on the list management committee and that sort of things. But that sort of thing. But when it comes down to you know the recruiting and and who we choose, it's really left up to the recruiters. Um, they watch so much footage throughout the year and or years, I should say, because they've been watching a lot of these players from. Um, when they're 15, 16, so yeah, really um, give them the autonomy to do their job at this time of the year. Have they told you who they're taking at pick six and eight then? <laughs> I think there's a lot of unknowns <laughs> still in front of us. Um, so, yeah, no, I haven't gone to that, that, that sort of specifics yet. What, what do you like there of the players you've seen? I mean, there's obviously a, a really talented young Key Ford who's from West Australia and Jai Amos. They've, there's a couple of really good midfield prospects there. What, what do you like personally about, about the, the players that you have been shown footage of? Well, I think there's just there's a good array of players. Um, you know, as you said, there's you know, ruck forwards and, and key forwards and um, players who can play um, all over the ground. So, uh, you know, you get to this stage of the year and the draft and, um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of talent around. And I think, the, I think the, the tricky thing with this draft is you know, the, the, probably the WA kids have played a, a lot more footy than some of the other players around the, around the country, um, especially Victoria. So there's probably a little bit more exposed form, but um, you know the, the kids seem to be coming through a lot more mature these days, and um, uh, they seem to you know be a, be a bit more developed as well in, in certain areas, and especially they seem to be you know a lot more ready for the AFL environment. So um, you know, and then we've seen over the last you know, you know ten years that players have, have come in and had impact straight away. So. That excites me that you don't have to put any um, limitations on what they can achieve in their first year. Does it excite you as well to have some potential a key forward, I guess, come through the doors at, at Fremantle in Jai Amos? The, the option is likely to be there to bring him in. And it, as we've spoken about on the show just a little bit earlier, it's so hard to find quality key forwards in the draft at, at any stage. And maybe over a, a period of time, Freo has been unable to, to get them through with early picks. But the opportunity could present itself tomorrow night. Yeah, potentially. Um, yeah, we're uh, one, pretty unsure on what's going what's to unfold in front of us um, at the moment. But, um, yeah, I've watched a bit of Jai's footage. Um, he seems like a really smart key forward. Uh, he's had a great year at, at in, in, the, in the Colts competition. So um, I think the directive from... The, the footy club has been to take the best available, so we'll just have to weigh up and see where he sits when um, our, our picks come along. And um, if he lands at our club, we think he can you know, place a lot of, a lot of footy for us, but we'll have to cross that bridge when it comes. There's expected to be quite a few West Australians in that range. We've mentioned Matt Johnson and Neil Erasmus, as well as Jai Amos so far in the show. How do you go about the balance of recruiting locally against interstate kids? I think it's a it's a fine line to tread. Uh, I, personally, I, I think you know, we just got to back your club in to take the first pick and retain whoever you pick in the, with those uh, yeah, uh, with the next player on your on your on your draft sheet. Uh, I think if you, if you just um, have a fixed mindset of choosing WA kids, you can miss out on some talent. Um, obviously, well documented last year that that Chairs left the club, but we feel like you know we're setting up an environment at the moment that. You know, players will want to stay and and um, you know make an impact at our footy club for a number of years. And just on the intro, you're talking about Andy Brayshaw and Caleb Sarong and add add Hayden Young to that that group of players. They, they seem really invested in what we're trying to do. So you've got to you know back in your culture to be able to retain those players. And um, yeah, so I just think it's a it's a fine line to tread. And um, best available is um, the way I would do it. First day of training. Uh, on Monday back at the club. How's the group looking? Jordan Clark won a couple of time trials. Tell us about his inclusion at the Dockers. Yeah, he feels like a part of the furniture already. Uh, uh, something our players have, and, and our staff have done really well is, is welcome the new players. 
um, and, and staff to the club. He's been training with our, uh, our, some of our boys for um, you know about a month now, so he, he feels like he, he, he knows them well. Um, and yeah, he he did a really good job at the time trial yesterday. Uh, really impre- impressed with how the players presented overall. I know they've been doing a lot of work um, together, so that that held him in really good stead. And the way Andy Brayshaw and Carl Sarong uh, presented himself yesterday was um, it was first class. Um, add Jordy Clark to that that list, and a couple of our younger second year players really stood up and and showcased what they can do as well. So. Overall, I was really impressed with the way they presented, presented themselves. Where do you have Clark earmarked for when you look ahead to the role he plays in 2022? Uh, we're going to give him an opportunity down back. Uh, we think he can be a um, you know, really good halfback for us. That's where he played a lot of his junior footy. Um, you know, his run and carry and, and, and kicking off halfback will we think can really help us set up some, some play from down there. Uh, clearly, he's got to get some things right with his defensive positioning and understanding our game plan and, and that type of thing, but it will give him an opportunity at halfback to start with. You bring in Will Brody into the football club as well, a former top 10 pick himself at the draft. Uh, what type of role do you expect him to play at the club next year? He probably didn't manage to hit his straps as consistently as he would have liked at Gold Coast, but how bullish are you that he can fulfil that potential that he showed as a junior prospect? I'm oh, really bullish. Uh, well, it, yeah, to answer the first question first, we give an opportunity, we'll give him an opportunity um, as a primary role will be as an inside mid. Uh, there's going to need to be a secondary role there just to get his game time up, as with all our mids. Um, so whether that's in the wing or, or we... You know, try and bring some of his aerial strengths um, to the forward line. We'll, we'll work on that um, when he hits the program um, full on. But yeah, we think he's got some really strong qualities there to be an inside mid for us. Uh, he's, he's very good in traffic with his hands and his ability to drive from inside to out. And, um, we're just yeah, we're really going to focus on his strengths and see if he can consistently bring his strengths um, to the table. And you know, we feel like there's a spot there if. He, if um, yeah, you know, he has a good pre-season. Justin, about six weeks ago, we were in this studio talking a lot about Rory Lobb's future and where he was going to be playing next year. How have the club gotten around him since that trade discussion uh, didn't go through? Yeah, well, you know, I caught up with Lobby the day after. I know Peter Bell's caught up with him as well the day after, pretty much the day after the um, trade period finished. And, you know, just reiterated what we were saying through the media in that time, that he's a required player. We think he's an important part of our future. Um, yeah, and you know, he just needs to get back into the club and, and get to work. Um, he's, he's done some work with, with, with some of our players over the off-season. Uh, um, players tend to move on really quickly, so we expect him to come back, get to work, and we expect all our players to welcome him back and, and, and embrace him like they have in the past. It's obviously been a, a bit of a rough patch as well for your skipper and that Fife with that uh, lingering shoulder injury. He's spoken about it a couple of times this off season. How's he? How's he tracking? Uh, he's, he's tracking well. He's um, he's progressing now. He's, he's been able to start sweating after the, the infection got in there, and um, we seem to be on top of that. Uh, so yeah, he's, he's back to work, back to building his fitness. Uh, it's going to be a bit of a you know, long, slow process in some ways, um, and it's disappointing, but. We expect him to be right and, and back into training by mid-Feb, um, if not late Feb. Uh, expect him to be right to go for the start of the season. So all was not lost. Uh, he's, uh, he's got a pretty good bank of work under his belt, so we expect him to come up um, just to the to the mark pretty quick. And um, Yeah, so I'm looking forward to him being ready for the start of the season. I think everyone is looking forward to that too. Before we let you go, Justin, we appreciate your time on Draft Night Countdown today. There's a lot of optimism out Freo. Can you guys sense that yourselves? Uh, the footy club was in the, the mix for the finals until pretty deep this year. Finished 11th in the end, but was right in that logjam of sides just outside the top eight. I imagine that's the goal, clearly, to break in there next year. But can you sense the, the positive outlook on your football club? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, you can get that sense. Um, there's a lot of positivity around um, all, our players are really optimistic about what we can achieve as well, but um, yeah, I call it optimism without being satisfied. Um, they know that there's a lot of hard work to 
to be done. All our staff are um, really positive, but understand there's a lot of work to be done and a lot of areas for our footy club to get right still. So, um, yeah, we're well, not under any illusions that we've still got a lot of work to do. So we're, we're in a really good spot. Um, most teams are this time of the year. But, um, yeah, we need to get to work and, and get better. So, you know, that started yesterday for our first to four-year players and we have a number of the older guys joining training, you know, Wednesday and Friday this week and they're really keen to get into it as well. So, yeah, it's an exciting time. Well, Gustin, it's an impressive young list that you've got at your disposal. It's about to get more exciting over the next couple of nights with those three top 20 picks, as we mentioned. Thank you so much for your time on Draft Night Countdown. We really appreciate it. Thanks, ladies. No worries.